Now, Dynamite is supposed to be this week the go-home show, in a sense. It's the last Dynamite before the pay-per-view revolution, right? So, to me, what that should mean in an ideal world is that that show is all entirely exclusively geared towards the pay-per-view. It is all designed, geared, engineered to drive interest and intrigue and excitement and engagement about the pay-per-view this weekend. Persuading folks to part with $40, $50 in order to buy the pay-per-view and watch said pay-per-view. And I'm sorry, this week's show just didn't do that. There are good things within the show, yes. But I just still have the same questions and same concerns about this company two plus years after they started. I don't have any questions about what happened on the opening segment. Granted, Tony Khan, when I hear him speak, it's like his voice doesn't match his body or his person. Very Elizabeth Holmesian. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, look it up and you'll get what I'm saying. His voice just doesn't match him. And you'll see the people talking about, well, that's the cocaine and that's the this or that's the speaking anxiety. I don't know. Like, I'm not expecting him to be absolutely fantastic or brilliant on the microphone. I actually like the fact that, you know, he feels a little bit more true to who he is and he is a little different. But, yeah, like, maybe some public speaking courses wouldn't be so bad for him. <laughs> maybe some promo classes. If you're going to be on TV, then let's be better about it. But you start off the show with the big announcement and big is relative. Like, how do we define big? Buying a failed, failing wrestling brand on the surface doesn't feel that big. Fair point. Could it also represent some big things for the company? Absolutely. I will talk about that in a separate video, but that was your big announcement and how you were starting off the night. The name dropping of Shane, that was kind of funny. Like, I'll, I'll let that one slide, yeah. Um, but that worked. Like, that obviously had internet buzzing. That had the fans in the arena buzzing. Nothing wrong with that. That was a good start to the show. But then you tie into it by talking about the fact that you bought ROH and you're going to have Brian Danielson take on Christopher Daniels. And I'm sorry, but is Christopher Daniels being featured on the pay-per-view in any way? No. So does he need this much TV time? Again, no disrespect, but damn it. You could have just had a face-downer segment between Brian Danielson and John Moxley, and that's all you needed to have. Like, get us emotionally connected in the characters. Get us emotionally connected to what they're doing, what they're about, and why we should care. Like when you look at the first hour of Dynamite, yes, you had the announcement of buying ROH, the Danielson Moxley stuff after the Danielson uh, Daniels match was eh. I don't think it was that spectacular. But then you've got like this half hour long plus fucking tag team battle royal. For what? Just so that way the young bucks could win? Yeah, I understand sometimes you gotta fill TV time, but you should be generating interest in your pay-per-view. And having this match, this battle royal go for a half hour plus ain't getting the job done, son. It just it just isn't. And now it's gonna be all this red dragon and fucking ah fuck that. Like you look at a perfect example to me of Get the people involved in the characters. Get the people involved in the story. You have the Jurassic Express come out at the end of this half hour plus long tag team battle royal. And they're afterthoughts here. And they're the tag champs. Imagine what you could have done with even a two or three minute video package. Talking about the tag champs. Pumping up the tag champs. Hyping up the tag champs. Actually providing some type of reason why we should care about them, why we should care about them having the titles, defending the titles, their threats or potential opponents that they'll have at the pay-per-view this weekend. 
And instead, we get kind of the cliched-ass Vince McMahon fucking finish. I had thought this company was supposed to be counterculture to Vince in WWE, not be exactly freaking like it. Like, that's lazy. That's just not good. And his bad habit of, once they put a belt on somebody, they make them largely irrelevant. What's not irrelevant, though, is everything involving MJF and CM Punk. This is arguably the best work that AEW has had in its history. I think it is, but we can argue. But most people would agree it's among the very best. And why is that? Because you have a reason to care about the characters. You have a reason to care about the story. You have reasons to believe because of the story, because of the narrative, because of the performance of the performers, that there is real heat. There is legitimate gripe. There is a legitimate concern, a legitimate reason for these two guys to have a problem. Like It's not all flips and kicks. And in fact, all the emphasis and focus on that by AEW and other wrestling companies over the past two decades has largely missed the plot. It's about characters. It's about stories. MJF versus CM Punk, frankly, should be the main event of the pay-per-view this weekend. This is easily the money draw of this show. It is easily the match that the most people are concerned with. It is easily the match they are most interested in. They are most engaged in. They care about the most. This is an example of doing something really well. It's not a surprise because it involves MJF and Punk. Like you could see this coming and you could see that, you know, you could really do something with these two guys. It's just natural chemistry is going to be there, blah. But we need more of this. Like this is the type of shit you should have leading into your pay-per-view. You know, is MJF changing as a person? No, he's going to hug CM Punk and kick him square in the gonads. And then bust Punk open and make him bleed and rub the blood on his shirt. And We overthink wrestling too much. Keep it simple. Make it about the characters. Make it about the stories. Like you look at Wardlow. You know, he's power bombing his opponent multiple times. He's winning. And then he stops Sean Spears. Like this has also been well done. You know, I see people talk about like the Triple H Batista type of dynamic here. Yeah, the logical thing you should be doing is MJF beats Punk at the pay-per-view. Wardlow manages to kind of stay there, but it, the tension continues to simmer. MJF hurries up and gets the belt off of Hangman Page, who's been made to be a bad champion anyways. And then in a few months before the end of the year, you, you have MJF turn on Wardlow, or more importantly, Wardlow turn on MJF when the fans are hungry for it, they want it, and they've got to have it. And you put the strap on fucking Wardlow and you make a new top guy for your company. Now, will they do that? Of course not. This is AEW we're talking about. But, like, here's an example of a character that they have done pretty well with. Again, story, character, giving people reasons to care. You can both be in awe of Wardlow and the physical prowess, but you can also relate to Wardlow's plight working for MJF. It's simple. Like it shouldn't be so hard to make your world champion not look like a second-rate player. And that's exactly what they've done with Hangman Page. I don't give a shit what you say. That's what they've done. The shit with MJF and Punk should have closed out this show. This six-man tag or whatever the hell you want to call this that featured... You know, Red Dragon and featured Adam Cole. Like, Adam Cole, after all this time, you bring him in to basically rehash a three-fourths undisputed era gimmick. That's lazy and stupid. Why did you bring him in if you were just going to rehash old freaking NXT shit? That's what they're doing. Paige should feel like a star relative to the roster. Paige should feel like a big deal, and instead he feels like an afterthought. It's almost like somebody said it's all about the pursuit with him and the championship reign should be over quickly. I wonder who said that. Because it does. 
And you talk about this company and you live in this fantasy world that they book their champions really well. No, they fucking don't. You cannot look at the way that Hangman Page has been booked or featured and think this is good. It's not. Are you really any more excited to see him defend his title at the pay-per-view? That match shouldn't even main event. Too much focus on wrestling at times. I know you want to have a wrestling heavy presentation. That's your identity. That's okay. But damn it all, that wrestling has to mean something. The characters, the stories, they have to mean something. Like if somebody new to AEW tuned in tonight for the first time, why would they give a fuck about this company borrowing, buying ROH? Why would they give a shit about half of the stuff that you've got going on at the pay-per-view this weekend? Why? It might be good to retain the audience that you have, but even at some point in time, that's going to provide a diminishing return. It's time to grow the audience a little bit and create those meaningful connections that last. And when you look at the presentation of a show like Dynamite this week, this ain't it.